Generic greetings and welcome to Order of Magnitude. Today's beverage is a nice cup of cream Earl Grey. Very tasty indeed. So Order of Magnitude was and is a prototype for a colony survival and simulation game set in our solar system after a calamitous event on Earth has forced people to settle on other stellar bodies. So things like our moon, Mars, Titan, etc. However, you may notice the past tense there. This was a prototype. Well, it still is a prototype. However, it's no longer being developed and it won't see any sort of full-scale commercial release. But before I check out this game and go through it and explain, you know, what it is, I want to go back a bit and set the scene. So, a couple of years ago, once Introversion Software had finished Prison Architect and released Scanner Sombra, they began work on their next game, and I believe this was the first idea for their next game. However, for the last two or three years, there's basically been a bit of an ominous silence <laughs> regarding uh, this and, well, them in general. We've not seen any game releases, we've not seen well, very few tweets and video updates, etc. However, they've recently put out a video entitled Chris Delay's Fail Masterclass part one. Uh, Chris Delay being the lead programmer and developer in Introversion and they go on to explain what they've been up to and in that video they show order of magnitude and explain why they abandoned the prototype, why it doesn't work, what they like etc. Now I'll put a link to that video in the description so you can check that out yourself. It's very similar to the old school Prison Architect Alpha videos which I always found quite Im amusing and informative. But their plan is to release more of those videos showcasing the prototypes, what they've been up to, what worked, what didn't work, what they like, and basically just, you know, explain things. And I thought that's not only interesting, but uh, quite amusing at times. But not only that, they're also allowing you to buy in to play these prototypes. Again, I will put a link in the description for that page. All proceeds and profits go to War Child, so it's basically a charity drive. Uh, I should also point out this is not in any way, shape, or form a sponsored video. Video. I've just paid in to play these myself because I'm personally interested and I want to sort of signal boost a good cause. So as always, links in the description, check it out yourself and uh, hopefully they'll release more and more videos explaining uh, what the game is they're showing and you know go through it and I think it's like I say just a quite a, a interesting topic and also a decent cause. So as always, links in the description and without any other more delay, let's check Order of Magnitude out. Order of Magnitude rebuilds humanity in space. This is as, after all a prototype so if it crashes, doesn't work or there's bits missing then we know why. So let's go to start campaign and it says uh, building Luna 1. This is Earth and we can see Oh, there's a bit of fire around um, America there, North America and indeed South America here. And we can see loads of asteroids all the way around, so we can pan around. There is, yep, that's definitely the sun. We've got Mars foothold over there. We've got Luna 1 and, ah, oh, we're now actually having to travel to uh, Luna 1. So I guess we'll do that. Let's go to locations here. We have Earth, Moon, Outpost, Mars, Foothold, Earth Belt, Luna 1 and Cryopod. So we're going to go to Luna 1. And we're going to zippity zoom towards, I believe, the south pole of this one. You can see it says building Luna 1. Fly to the Luna 1 site. Check Luna 1 uh, on the locations list to travel there. And, oh, it's very... Yeah, it's very topographical, this thing. I should point out, I've not actually played this. This is as far as I've actually played. I have watched the video, however, but we're just going to go through it together. So, building Luna 1. Request landing ships. This is where we'll build our new lunar home. The south pole of the moon is rich in minerals and contain iron and aluminium. Also has frozen ice nearby that we can use to water and oxygen. Click the build button. Okay. And it's asking us to build the, uh, what's it, this, uh, the Colonial Star landing pod let's just go there and oh yeah we're actually having this come and land so we get these looks to be colony transport ships uh, looks to be WS and D to move and we can use scroll good grief that's getting loud uh, and we can sort of pan around and see we have this rocket ship that's landed followed by these colony transports so it's asking us to build a couple of stockpiles we brought a ton of construction materials with us in the main supply rocket which is this one in the center here uh, press the build button and go to stockpile so let's just place a stockpile one and then two with a little bit of a gap there and if we zoom in which we can see uh, these robots here so the robots are coming from that and I love that. Uh, if they said in the video, if you zoom into these, they do make a, like, a, you know, get out of the way, beep, beep noise. Hang on. 
<laughs> That's pretty cute. I like that. Okay, so build a basic colony hub. We must construct a habitable base for our human survivors. Uh, speaking of human survivors, we have 300 human survivors and resources on the top here. So we have oxygen, water, food, and drones. And obviously we have uh, net uh, negatives on some of these because we are just surviving. I think we can actually look at our survivalist. Let's go over here. And yes, there they are there. So we've got a couple of people just standing around. Obviously very blocky. I don't know whether this is just temporary programmer art or that was the style that we're going to go for. Either way, it matters not. We're going to go to build and then to the colony hub. And I'm going to place it out to one side there. And there we go. So build a basic dormitory. Our survivors need beds. As an absolute bare minimum, build a basic dormitory. Yeah, I will do that in a moment. But if I scroll into here, we can spin around and good grief. It's yeah, We are on the dark side of the moon there. You can see, oh yeah, that's, that's pretty good. You can see because of the... Because of the way these are all set out. We're getting very little sun over here. Hmm. Anyway, I've placed that over there. We need a dormitory. So build and then dormitory. Obviously, it's pointing out our resources, which is 30 concrete, which is 3 iron. Or, well, and also 3 iron, 3 iron and 3 glass. I'll place the dormitory there. And that should do for now. It also says build a concrete silo. Our first buildings will be manufactured out of lunar concrete. This is a simple construction material that we can make almost entirely out of the lunar regolith that surrounds us. Let's just zoom in, actually. We can see... Uh, that the robots are actually taking resources and then building it. Yeah, some of them are... Well, they're building stuff... They're taking it from that rocket ship. Maybe if we build a couple more stockpiles. Let's go off book already and build a couple more of these stockpiles. So, one and then two. And I'm hoping that building those will speed this up just a little bit. Although, it doesn't seem to be. Anyway, we need a concrete silo. So, build concrete silo... And I'm just going to put them in one and then two next to this thing. I don't know if two is required, but we're doing that. And it also says our concrete silo uses lunar regolith, sand, rocks, and dirt. So basically the bare stuff on the ground here. Um, oh, there we go. That's that's very close. I think they pointed out that they wanted um, this not to be an exact simulation and replica of you know, our own solar system in terms of the distances and the sizes involved, etc. They wanted to go for a middle ground where it was aesthetically pleasing, but also, you know, you can sort of go really, really far because the long game would be to gather resources from different parts of the solar system to transport them around. So not just having one or two or three people or even a couple of hundred, but we're going to thousands and then tens of thousands in the long term. Anyway, over to building and then to the mining zone. Can we rotate this around? We can rotate that around. Let's place it a little bit further away from our colony, just in case. And I'll place it over this rock, and we'll see if that is deleted. It's also asking us to build an RTG, which is radioactive thermoelectric generator. Or not radioisotope thermoelectric generator. There you go. Being corrected there. An RTG will place probably there, and that should hopefully do it. So nothing is working yet because the facility needs electrical power. Eventually we'll use solar panels and batteries in our base. Well, because the sun obviously is only going to be on here for some time, because uh, of where it is and the orbits and such, we uh, may not have much opportunity there. We can see that we have our mining zone in place and that is now, it looks like it's all functioning. And we've got these big scrapers that are going from the back and then scraping bits towards the centre there to gather that. Each building seems to have a power drain, uh, a says power level there, and expected resources. So, anthrite, uh, lemonite, or gigmanite, something like that, and regolith. So there you go. And it's been put into these sort of carts there, these lunar carts, which we'll have uh, collected from, or well, by the drones there. And then wait for construction to proceed. The base is now powered and facilities are working. The mining zone scrapes up the lunar surface and our drones carry regolith to the concrete silo, which then processes the regolith into concrete. So if I click on that, see it says power drain, zero, five, one active. So only one is active. No, nope, neither is active. Oh no, there we go. One is active now. So I didn't actually need two, but that's now working and it's creating this. And oh, there we go. We now have this functioning. However, we have, oh, it looks like some needs there. Ox... Oxygen or two, water and I don't think it's apples, it'll just be straight up. <laughs> I don't think they want a, a specifically a Granny Smith apple, they're wanting food. And oh, there we go, look at all that. We've now got loads of resources streaming from these ships, these colony ships, which have water, oxygen, and food in them, and they're bringing it over. So there you are. And 
yeah, they're stockpiling it on the outside. I think I can zoom in to see inside the bunks. Yes, and that is... Yes, we have a prison architect style dormitory. <laughs> it is very basic, but it did say that is the very basics required. Anyway, so we need a permanent supply of things. We need to build two algae farms on your colony. These grow large vats of algae over time that we can process into basic food rations. So, space, slop. So, algae farm. And we can't place it anywhere, you know. You know, but you can place it adjacent to... Uh, adjacent to the colony now placing one there would probably not be good because we can't then connect it to that so i mean can i do that no but i can place it oh but i can place it like that though so i think i'll do that all right so it's functional in terms of the placement and the grid snapping in the building so that's good upgrade our power generation we expend our base our nuclear battery will not be able to supply all of our power needs must build three solar panels nearby so i'm going to build oh hang on uh, there is actually a search function as well. I should point out the categories. This is everything, factories, energy, storage, habitation, vehicles, ships, drones, and weapons. So I don't know if they would eventually have combat, whether you get, um, say, piracy or something like that, rival colonies, or maybe even, um, maybe even things like colonies breaking away because of lack of needs or happiness. You know, all of these are one of those things that could have been but sadly are not. So we're upgrading our power generation. We have, it says build three solar batteries, but we've built, uh, sorry, solar panels, but we've built four because we're mavericks, obviously. And let's see how this one goes. But sadly, although I've built these panels, we can see that, well, they're A, facing the wrong way, and B, even if they were facing, oh no, they do turn. So they turn, and you notice that we get this um, Blade Runner orange glow. Other films with orange neon are available. Uh, but we've got this orange glow around the panels to denote that they are active. So, yeah, it's uh, readable there and they are tracking the, tracking the sun. And uh, build three power cells. A single day on moon lasts 28 Earth days. We can expect sunlight for at least 14 days straight. Slightly more at the lunar pole where we are this means our night will last 14 days as well so we need to begin storing our generated power build three solar cells so let's go ahead and go for power cells and i guess i'll put it around here right well oh hang on if i hold middle it uh, zooms in which is interesting one i guess we'll place it we could place it right next to each other but i'm gonna put a little gap in between just just in case so there's the three how are we doing for stuff? Oxygen is negative, water is negative, food negative, drones were fine. So I'm guessing we'd have to build more drones as we progress on there. Let's have a quick zoom in and we can see this is our algae farm basic. And so there you go. We've got the agitator going round in this vat of green goo. So, and the fact that there's, <laughs> there's drones going through. But I was going to say the fact that we've got all these like sounds and such and it is yeah it, it is positional as well so a fair bit has gone into that interesting all right stable oxygen supply is required now with basic food production underway let's just turn our attention to oxygen the minerals that make up the lunar surface are packed with oxygen in the form of metal oxides and by processing the mined lunar rock we can release that oxygen we also need to produce more construction metals such as iron and aluminium as a useful byproduct or we also produce not we have to uh so build two ore refineries near the mining zone okay so build and the ore refinery which says build near the mining zone i'll place it at this side one and then two there is some overlays so you've got research which you've got rocketry and improved habitation i don't know if any of these work it says cost 30 science perhaps you have to build science labs we've got colony which shows us our population uh the age so of the uh colonies so we've got how many have we got? It doesn't actually say for children, but not a lot. Same for middle age, even fewer actually. Adults is the majority of the population at 209 and teenagers at 67. We can see things like population there. Uh, age range, so we've got, you know, between... Oh, there you go. We've got no one between age 0 and 4 and 5 and 9, but we have got 35 between 10 and 14. So that. Oh, there we go. It's actually showing now once I scroll up a bit. Population, buildings, day, demographics. You can see all of that there. And, uh, oh, pregnancies as well. Let's go for resources. Yep, yeah, shows our overall storage, supply, demand, net. There's the jobs. Yeah, raising children, waste disposal, maintenance, etc. Power. 
and then policies. So you can have rationed water, rationed food, work, education. I don't know if there's a hierarchy of needs in the game for the colonists, so whether they get unhappy because they're only on basic stuff, whether you need to provide luxuries, whatever. Um, I don't know if that's A in this one, I doubt it, and B if it was ever planned, but you know. Uh, so we need to process this other stuff. Uh, is it lemonite or ilmenite? Whatever it is. I already have some of the stockpiles for mining. Process it under the high temperatures, increase oxygen, and produces iron and titanium. Click on the ore refinement controls and process the sample. Confirm. So you confirm those, and there you go. It is actually, yeah, processing that. And we can go and zoom in. Yeah, some electric forges of some kind. All right, back over to building and to our oxygen tanks. We're going to place the oxygen tanks close to here, because why not? Other things we have is logistics, and we turn that on, we can see where things are going between. So there's the arrows, oh, sorry, the lines going between here. I'm guessing is red supply or is red demand? I don't know, but we have on the top right all of the breakdowns there. Obviously, we've got oxygen, water, food, and stuff at the stop, uh, the top there, but it stops showing detailed readouts, whereas on the logistics, it shows us more detailed stuff there. And we're actually on positive for things like titanium, because we're now producing that. We also have time controls on the top right. Uh, minerals, this is a, a another overview. So, anthrite, we have close to the colony. And, oh, what's this? It's another person coming. It's another colony transport ship, so there's more survivors arrived. Okay. Uh, we got we got dirty ice, and you can see it's different areas. Yeah, yeah. So only the silica is on these mountains, whereas the ice is in the craters where you wouldn't get, you know, the sunlight to evaporate that off. Uh, well, I guess it would be, yeah, would be um, defrost it because it's still frozen at the moment. Anyway, start water recycling. We need to start recycling our water. Let's go for a water recyc here, which again has to be connected to the colony, so I'll put it in there. Why not? Water disposal facility to the colony. The building will gather up all of the waste products created by our survivors, excrement, waste water, and carbon dioxide that we exhale. Okay. And I don't know whether that exports it or changes it over. So I think the long-term goals were that you'd obviously build something like this, but you would then have to transport maybe resources from different parts of the different parts of the planet. So, you know, there might be more of a certain type of resource elsewhere. So you'd have to then bring that back to the colony. That would then grow this colony. You could then have satellite colonies that would then grow bigger themselves. Things like obviously the uh, the sun, you would be you not know, depending on orbits, if more on the equator, you'd get more sun, so you'd put around that belt more solar panels and you know, means running all of this stuff. And there was the idea to have it, I believe they explained it was going to be a mix between Factorio and Kerbal Space Program. So you would have things like this pipe here, you would instead of just having the resources being dumped like this, you'd have it come out on either a pipe or conveyor network. So there was all of these things in place because there's also inputs for like. Yeah, these are around here. You can see the pipe sort of entrances there. Speaking of entrances, there's no door on this thing, so I don't know how to get in. Anyway, so reprocess waste water. We have to recycle waste water before it's safe for human use again. Well, not with that attitude, I guess. Chemical process and many others performed by a facility called a process plant. So let's go for a process plant, which is quite teeny tiny, but we'll place it probably there. Uh, it only says one. And then we need to set it to water recycling. So that's already, you can see we've got quite a fairly large colony. I mean, it's not brilliant, but it does the job. <laughs> we've also got a flag there as well. And I wonder if our no, our population has gone up, but only because I think that colony ship. Do they eventually dismantle? These transport ships, I do not know. I do not know. Anyway, we're building that plant. Oh, it's built, so we'll go for water recycling. But what else can we do? Electrolysis. So inputs is water times two. We get hydrogen and oxygen out. So you can breathe it, you can blow it up, whatever you need to do. Reverse electrolysis to create water. 
Yeah, there's loads of stuff. Wow. Let's go for the water recycling anyway. And build water storage. What other buildings have we got? We got tri frame, lamps, sieve domes, col oh, we can place colonists. I'm guessing this is dev stuff. A colony walk where basic concrete walls. Hydroponics facility. Science lab. Oh yeah, that'll probably create well, as you may imagine, science. Anyway, let's place the oxygen tanks. Um I won't place them right next to each other. I like to leave a little bit of a bit of a gap there. So these are producing our ore. Well, this is gathering the regolith. That's producing the stuff we need there. Oxygen tanks are actually full. Uh, water tanks are going to be the same. But obviously there's certain resources that we won't be able to either make easy or make at all here, which is where the whole transport system from other places would sort of come in. But we have our basics there. I also don't know whether, as I said, this is the final look of it, whether this was just programmer art type stuff or they wanted it stylized. Uh, recycle carbon dioxide. We can do the same basic thing for oxygen. Survivors breathe out carbon dioxide we collect from the waste disposal facility. Build another process plant near the waste disposal facility and set its recipe to electrolysis CO2. So I think we can place another process plant there. Um, yes, we can place one there. It's not right next to this waste disposal facility, but it's close enough for for our needs. And after all, this is not something we're keeping. We're just having a bit of a play around, which is the main... It's basically just... I'm intrigued by what we could have got. And also, I'm looking forward to the next videos, and hopefully they do release more to see what the next prototype was and whether or not anything, whether it be ideas or technology from this prototype, transferred over to that. So, interesting. Let's go for the electrolysis there, and there we are. It says, fabricate more drones. Colonies... Oh, hang on. we got another pod coming down there. Yeah. Colony's sufficiently busy now that the drones can't keep up with the demand. You can see the toolbar at the top. Uh, drones, 100%. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough. So, build an electronics factory and set it to make drones. So, building electronics factory, which is... It's just a... <laughs> it's just a primitive. It's just a primitive shape. Okay, no problem. I'll build it... Probably... I mean, can we build it down here? No. What about up the top? No, so there is a base level where you have to place it. I'll place it over here. Why not? You should... Drones be less than 100%. I mean, there are too many drone jobs to do. Okay, fair enough. But we'll set the drone jobs in a minute. Can we click on it and do it now? No, we can't. Okay. We have colony construction supply ship. We have zero resources in it. So it would be nice to deconstruct that at some point. Anyway, we're going for make drones. Confirm. It says 10 hours. And, oh, permanent water supply. Let us carry on with producing water for our survivors. The site on the south pole of the moon was chosen because many of the nearby craters haven't been haven't seen sunlight in millions of years. It means they are likely rich sources of frozen water, which we can extract. Minerals and dirty ice. And, oh, there we go. So build a mining zone over ice. It's in a comms tower. There are two nearby craters. Oh, okay. There are two nearby craters that contain ice. The nearest is useless because it is too small to build within this one. It's therefore mine ice and the further away crater. However, the larger crater is outside your drone range. You will need to build comms towers. Once you've built the comms tower, build a mining zone inside the larger crater. Okay. So I'm guessing I'm going to build. I'm going to build one right in the centre. And then how far can we build that? Ah, you can see there's like a... Like a maximum range, I think. So we'll do that. And... Oh, there's the range. It's shown there. And is that alright? Outside drone range. So I'll wait for them to build the rest of these. I actually don't think I need all of them, but there you are. Let's use the time controls uh, to speed that up. Oh. And actually that's... Well, that's actually a bit difficult to look at. A bit get strange. You get a bit of a motion si motion sickness there, of all things, which is weird. I've never experienced that. Well, most games, but certainly not in 
this sort of thing. Anyway, uh, these are built for the most part. That one is getting built. I think we should be able to build a comms tower in there. And that should be it done. Obviously, everything is now drawn back and forward. But if they went with the original idea of pipes and that sort of thing. Or maybe shuttlecraft, longer ranged, things like that. Oh, hang on. I think I can see a drone. Here it is. Here's a little drone. I believe this map is actually... It does actually use the height map from scans. <laughs> I like the little beep beep noise. Yeah. <laughs> when you get too close. I wonder if they have names and personalities on the side. Gertie, maybe. No. No. Shame. I mean, it's... When you get prototypes like this... And obviously, there's been there's been explanations of certain things, but I don't know if there's other things that haven't been explained. What maybe was an idea? What worked? What didn't work? Many of the maybe plans that was just jotted down on a back of a BMAT or in a notepad about you know oh well maybe the drones can go rogue and you know like what far off plans did they have or whether this was literally as far as they got? You know, it's interesting to speculate and discuss. That's almost finished that tower. Big space needle. And then we need to build... That's in there. So... It says to cover the crater. Pretty confident I'll cover that crater, but I'll see about... Or maybe we need to build some more. I'll build one there. And one there. And one there, and that covers that crater. Is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. What else would we need to build? It would be a... Mm, a mining zone in here? Build a mining zone and start, yeah, inside the crater. Oh yeah, so it is a mining zone. So I'll just put one there. And that should do the job quite nicely. And then obviously they'll have to transport resources. There's all of our drones. We're currently on 100% drone usage. We have 50 drones. We went up from 30. We have more survivors, 516 survivors. I don't know if that's because of... Oh yeah, 17 babies. Okay. And I'm guessing if we wanted to control things like that, we could say, well actually, policy, child labor, well you can turn off child, you can turn on child labor, law and order, immigration, emigration, representation, religion. See, oh, that's not even set. So, we need to process the ice into water, build another process plant near the ice mine and set its recipe. Okay, so build process plant. I'll just place it around the back there. And I wonder how long it takes to do that. And I wonder if the resources out the back are a different colour. No, it just seems to be a, a big pile there. Actually, we're getting two types of resources as we're scraping that. It's be very blurry as well. <laughs> Not that we can get too, we can't get too uh, preachy and critical over a prototype that's a couple of years old that didn't uh, get very far. I say it didn't get very far. I have no idea how long they spent on this. I'm guessing with a lot of prototypes, a lot of the time it would be too long. <laughs> yeah, too long. It didn't work. Waste of time. Hopefully not. Hopefully there's at least positives to get out of it. Whether or not be figuring out what worked, what didn't work, what direction they want to go with the next thing, any technology and things they can reuse, code and whatnot. I wouldn't say art assets. <laughs> not not for this, but there you are. Anyway, we've got our drones coming over. It's taking quite a while for them to get all this way. I mean, they are coming quite a distance. I don't know what distance that is, but it looks to be quite far. Let's turn on logistics and we can see, oh yeah, it's coming from there. Yep. Where are the little drones? Little drones are coming. There we are. Let's zoom in. Get the beep beep. Here we go. <laughs> ah, sometimes it's simple things. So. Oh, build another two process pants. My mistake. Uh. I'm hoping they'll be able to build both of those with the resources that they have, or whether or not then maybe they'll have to come back. Let's put it to max speed and let them crack on. That's built. 
set a dirty ice. And this one is not being produced. Oh, but I think, are they taking some stuff from that? No, the drones are actually taking this ice to that and then they'll take it back over, I believe. Okay. But this is quite a big job for the drones because it's quite a way away, isn't it? So, we'll have to see. Confirm that. And expand the housing space. We no longer have enough beds and more survivors will be on the way. Build two more basic dormitories. They will do for now until we can create better homes for ourselves. Or survivors, rather. Basic dormitories. Um, I'm running out of space, though. However, I believe there's a corridor. Let me check. Yes, so you can build, like, walkways. So if I just build one to there... Can I then build... Ah, uh, it builds off to the side. I don't know whether or not you can have multiples. Well, I'll do that, and I'll put one... Is there, like, a, a T section? There's a hub. Mm, if there is, I can't... I can't spy it. Okay, another dormitory there. And that should do. It's quite a... When the sun is not here, which is half the time, it's quite a... Yeah, a very dark game and quite depressing, actually, to look at. I like all the little lights on here, are they? Indicating it's processing stuff. So, concrete is functional, but all the best space buildings will be made from aluminium. We can create this directly from the lunar surface. So, minerals and... Anthrite. Yep. Yeah. Build a mining zone on top of it. Well, I mean, up here. Oh, over there. I see. Okay. So, whoops. Uh, build mining zone. We can't build over there, but we know what to do. It is a comms tower, which we can place there. And that will extend our building over to this area. And then we'll build another mining zone. Looks like there'll be a 90 degree snap for the rotation there. I think... Um, a couple of reasons they explain in the video why they abandoned this. There's several reasons, I think. It was that there's very little human element at this stage. The colonists are just, well, drones, basically. They're here, and we have to keep them alive. We don't know what they're doing, what we're going about. There's no human touch to it, no personal thing involved. And we've got a big colony, and we've not even touched that side of it. Also, I believe they saw Surviving Mars and went, hmm, they have a bigger budget, and that's pretty much the same game that we're making, so they flung in the towel. Which I guess you could sort of understand there. Anyway, that uh, is getting built. Let me speed up to max. And that's done. Let's place this. But I mean, so far... No dramas, no glitches, no problems, and a tutorial that is functional. In fact, to be honest with you, it's better than a lot of tutorials you play in <laughs> fully released games. But uh, that may be not saying too much. So, to our refineries, I'm going to place them here. Like so. And we need to process this anthrite. I say, I don't know if uh, later on people would need to work in here, whether there would be a sort of spe specialist in class system where people would be specialised in certain jobs, whether you'd get more efficiency bonuses, or whether or not it would just be totally uh, set to you no know, robots. And produce glass from silicon. Build another refinery, set its recipe to make glass from silicon. Place them all in a row. Seems more efficient that way, I think. And then we'll set it going. And there's... The uh, sun setting for another half <laughs> human lifespan. And we'll set that to silicon to get glass. And expand the solar array. There's actually a lot more... A lot more in here than I thought. I don't know if that's in a perfect row, but there you are. It says build three more. We'll build four more. And expand power storage. And build three more of these. So, one, two. I don't know if they wanted this uh, Tesla power wall type 
uh, monolith from 2001 thing. Grow vegetables in hydroponics. Our survivors won't die eating protein rations made from algae, but they won't like it either. We need to produce better food for survivors. Okay, so that's obviously now going towards the... They have a... Ah, so where do I place that? Do I just place it anywhere? I'll place it there. Yeah, they have now, like, more desire rather than just needs. This is about living, not surviving now, I guess. So that's getting built. There's hydroponics going up. Survivors up to 675. Oxygen net, water net, food net. And, oh, connect the hydroponics building. Use a colony walkway to connect them. Can you go over there? No, it looks like you can't do that, but I can do that, I think. And hopefully that'll work. And that'll be functional. Yeah, five there. We're on positives for pretty much everything. And that's now connected. Produce fertilizer from human waste. Build two more processing plants. So yeah, there's a lot of things to place, that's for sure. And it's teaching us what we need to do, and giving us all the information there. But it's very, um, what would be the term? I don't know if restrictive is the right term, but it's very A to B to C to D. Like, there's very little option for me to experiment and to change things with. Which, I, again, I think they also pointed out that that's just how it is. And there you go. End of tutorial. Let's be a maverick then. Let's build a science lab. Where... Must be attached to a colony, must it? Right. Well, I could build... There's no reason why I can't build another... What's this? Where is the colony basic? What's this concrete wall? It's a concrete wall. Good. Glad we've clarified that. Uh, modular building basic. Don't know if that has any purpose. Colonist. Yeah, you can just place a colonist. Fair enough. Civ dome. Well, we've got an option to place it. We're going to try it, aren't we? We're going to give it a go. And... Radar dish. I'm going to place stuff. There's a rotor module. Alright. Don't know what that would be for. Anyway, over to the colony hub. I'm going to place that there. Followed by placing a science... Hang on. A science lab next to it like so. So there's a civ dome. Is that being created or... Oh, it requires a connection. Yeah. So it is just a, a big dome. Um, like we've seen on other sort of these sort of things it places straight away as well you notice that uh, it says it's got no connection but if I place that in here it'll probably say it's all legit now <laughs> but we'll see so the science thing here that's getting built uh, it says no connection oh, wow. I guess you have to then connect it directly to this then uh, which is possible. This is, I guess, where you would have potentially... Um, yeah, can I do that? Yes, I can. And... Yeah, where you can build along. This is where you would potentially have to either connect everything together... Or have... Like a... A shuttle network or... That sort of thing. Or like rovers... And such. But I'm guessing we can go to research now. Start rocketry. Confirm research. And it's going to start researching, is it? It says power drain. Zero inactive. It says it needs stockpile of hydrogen, titanium, aluminium. Right, so you need, I think, resources to do that. But I'm not going to go into really any further with that one. Because that's, that's basically the... That's basically the game as far as I can tell. We have finished this tutorial. I've placed some of the other buildings. Um, sadly we've not finished that because we are in need of iron. It will take quite some time to get that iron there but that is the prototype. 
So for what it is, you can see, I think, the potential there and maybe even the reasons why it has not been continued. Whether or not you would personally want to like play this, I don't know. It's obviously going to be down to personal preference and you know many, many other things, but you never know what what might have happened, what this would have progressed towards, etc, etc. Either way, it's definitely been interesting looking at it, and I can see, I can understand the reasons why they may not have continued with it. But, uh, as I said, it was something I was interested in, in terms of the video, listening to that, and I think it's a good cause, you know, to you chip a couple of generic units of currency there where you get to play all of the prototypes, and, you know, if nothing else, that's uh, not too bad at all. Either way, we're going to leave it there for Order of Magnitude. I would be interested in showing some of the other prototypes. If you want to see that, then by all means let me know in the comments. As I said before, links will be in the description for not only the video uh, from the developers explaining what the game is and what's happened, etc., but also for the page where you can uh, grab this yourself if you do so desire. Hope you have enjoyed this and it's been just a bit of a mess around, bit of a laugh, and also quite informative and entertaining. Either way, hope you have enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.